What's up my beautiful people? Welcome to the Jonathan Benaya podcast, a show that is wild, <laughs> very wild. We are proudly Uganda's number one conservation and tourism show, but we also benefit from a listenership from all across the African continent and the world at large. We try to put out a new episode every Sunday with discussions ranging around how to make the natural world a better place, creating awesome images, telling stories with words, wildlife films and photography, with occasional musings on sound and tech. If these topics fascinate you as much as they interest me, I promise you this podcast will have you in a spin. I do share a lot of my personal experiences, and from time to time, I'll have one or two guests on the podcast to have some very insightful discussions. So thank you so much for tuning in, and enjoy your time here. some help and that help i believe will come from you welcome to the jonathan benar podcast and for those guys that have been watched not not watching <laughs> those that have been accessing the podcast thank you so much for supporting the show we've been uganda's number one podcast for the last i guess close to three months <laughs> and it's all because of all the incredible work that you guys do in um listening to the show streaming the show, recommending it, sharing it with your friends. Now, I do have a bit of um I have a bit of a challenge and that's why I come on today. <laughs> that's why I'm asking for some help and I'll come to why I need that help in a bit. But let me just give us a bit of a background. So, um the podcast is currently in its audio form and we've been we've been doing quite well. <laughs> uh, I would probably say excellently well, but I don't know if that's an English word. Um yeah but we've uh, been having a bit of a chat with people um that listen to the podcast you guys and also a, f- a few friends of mine about um the possibility of making it a video podcast now I'm one of those persons that's, that, that that are a bit of a um perfectionist <laughs> so before I choose to go um video I need a few of the foundational things to be in place So that's why we've taken a bit of a time a, a bit of time to um go video and uh, of course we're still testing the waters um yeah as i said it's mainly been an audio podcast and it's doing very well <laughs> um uh, it's still the number one tourism and conservation podcast and that's still going to be the case we might still slide in a bit of uh, tech and music as we go on but um we're still going to maintain it as a tourism and conservation podcast. Now, in light of uh, making this a video podcast, as uh, we, we we've been discussing about getting a few things. Um of course the first package came, we got a couple of mics. We've been using some excellent mics. The only challenge with them is that they are different mics and they do look different, they do sound different as well. Um and the challenge that poses is when we have guests on the podcast in a video form then you don't really have um a consistent look on the show so we picked up a couple of mics this being one i've just remembered i should have put on a pop filter <laughs> uh but well <laughs> because when you swing it uh, sometimes some things don't um go to plan so 
I guess that's a that's a tip if you are recording sound, uh, voice over stuff like this, then maybe think of putting on a pop filter. Anyway, so we did pick up a couple of mics, uh, this being one, and uh, another package is coming of uh, several other things that will help us uh, get on board in light of making this a video podcast. Now, back to the reason why I asked for help. Uh, number one, we are looking for a venue. <laughs> so if you know of a nice looking place where we can um, shoot um, uh, comfortably, freely, <laughs> Uh, of course, a beautiful place where the, 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 the visuals will uh, look nice. Please do hit me up in the comments. Um, well, I don't think we should use the comments. Uh, use the email address. So I'll leave the email in the podcast description if you are listening to the podcast on any of the streaming platforms that we've been publishing to. And if, you've ha- if, if you're listening to the podcast through YouTube, this particular episode... <laughs> Uh, you can find the email address in the, uh, uh, call it what, YouTube district description. Okay, so we need a venue. And then I am also thinking about running um, either this very podcast or a parallel podcast uh, in which I might need a host, a co-host to come on board. So that's request number two. If you know of someone who would... Uh, make a very um, f- a fantastic co-host for the show. Uh, do hit me up on email as well. Um, yeah, so those are the two requests. Now, the third request is a bit more lengthy, uh, and that's regarding a couple of topics that I've got, um, I guess, lined up for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> um, and uh, what I'd like from you is just to get a bit of feedback. Are these topics that would interest you? Are these uh, topics that... Um, you think would really cause a bit of a debate, a conversation, um, because what we do here is create uh, engaging conversations around tourism, conservation, travel, and I said a bit of music and tech from, from time to time. So that, I'll go through the topics. Uh, two requests, I'd like you to let me know if uh, topics, if any of the topics um, are quite engaging. And then secondly, I'd like you to also share with me potential candidates, potential names, potential guests that we could have uh, on, the pod, on, on the podcast for those particular episodes. So I have the topics <laughs> listed here. I'm not going to prove to be a smart head and just get them off my head. So I'll just skim through them and give a bit of a background or call it notion of why uh, those particular topics were decided on. So, um, firstly, I'd like to do an episode on community and conservation. I know we did a, uh, we did a, an episode a couple of weeks back. That was with uh, uh, Evelyn, Evelyn from Ride for a Woman. Uh, but that was particularly to do with uh, community conservation around the gorillas. So, you were basically talking about the uh, interaction between the community in Bohoma, which is one of the sub- I don't know if it's one of the sectors, I believe, in Buindi Impenetrable National Park. Um, and uh, we were looking at the interaction between uh, gorillas and the community. We titled it Gorillas in Our Midst. If you've not listened to the pod, that particular episode, please go and listen to it. So that's one topic that I'd like to pick up on. But now I want to expand it a bit more towards, um, I guess, stretch it further than just the gorillas to towards uh, several other protected areas that we can uh, sample and see how to discuss a bit about the interaction between the community because there's a bit of uh, usually a bit of uh, strife between communities and the wildlife but also there are win-win situations as well so we'd like to cover a bit of that then i also want to do a topic on solo travel so if you are a solo traveler or if you know someone who is a solo traveler please hit me up i'd be interested to have um uh, someone who who can come onto the show and share a bit of the experience as a solo traveler and also share some tips here and there. Uh, then uh, we did a topic, we did an episode with uh, Winnie Ryoba from Kenya, uh, who you might you might know from Just Ryoba, <laughs> the Just Ryoba way. And I'd like to pick up uh, on uh, that conversation and expand it a bit further. Uh, that was a conversation on intra-African travel. So if you are an expert in that field, if you know someone who is going to add value to the conversation, please do let me know. Uh, I'd like to do a topic on climate rebellion. Now, 
you, you guys I'm sure do see a bit of uh, uh, if I could call them campaigns uh, these, the, the, we, we have quite a vocal Ugandan Vanessa Nakate one of our own who um, is doing quite a bit in the climate um, I call it climate rebellion climate campaigns so I'd like to have a conversation around uh, how those campaigns um, I guess being a force for change force for good um and also I, i think it would be nice to also do a bit of criticism uh not criticism critiquing is the word i was looking for um so if you know an climate expert or maybe someone who is very passionate about that topic please let me know uh, send me an email i'll be very glad to engage and i guess as i said the conversations we want to have on this podcast should be high value conversations Um I do want to do a topic on inaccessible destinations. Inaccessible versus accessible destinations. Now let me just explain this a bit. So um inaccessible if you if you work in the tourism sector you might know that accessible destinations are basically destinations where um which which are which I guess cater for everyone. So this particular episode would focus on destinations that make it easy for people who have what i call reduced mobility now the world calls them people with disability which i do not believe is the case because they have a huge potential and they can do a whole lot uh, i feel like it's just a matter of reduced mobility so i would like to do a, a conversation about that i guess spotlight a few lodges spotlight a few tour companies uh, spotlight a few destinations that have um enabled or allowed for um these people to access the destinations easily freely and comfortably as well so if you know an expert in the issue of reduced mobility uh issue of accessible destinations please do let me know i'd like to do an episode on that um i also want to do an episode on wellness holiday experiences okay so wellness is basically a niche i don't know if it's a niche or it's just a subsection in the tourism sector and it's been trending quite a bit so i'd like to see how um the wellness I shouldn't call it a sector but that wellness thing is performing in the region the east african region but also on the african continent as well uh, so if you are an expert in wellness holiday experiences please hit me up in the email i'd be glad to have you on the show and explore that interesting conversation um i'd like to do a, co- a topic or call it an episode on plants of the gods. Now this is me just basically doing a bit of a deep dive into uh the herbs, the traditional way in which our forefathers used to treat themselves. So if you are an expert or if you know an expert in that field, uh, I do not intend to spook anyone, <laughs> but you know when we were up in uh Elgon, in Mount Elgon, we uh, had quite an interesting conversation around um the spiritual world especially the african traditional society so i'd be looking to uh do a bit of a follow up of that conversation and uh yeah do it do a deep dive into the the plants of the gods as i'm calling them like how people used to treat themselves back then i think that would be an interesting conversation so <laughs> uh, do let me know if you are that expert or if you know someone who is an expert Now the neighbor just began drilling I don't know why but we will just have to keep going then um yeah that's that's what happens when you when you are recording in your home space sometimes the neighbor's dog is barking sometimes the kids are making noise but we'll just have to keep on going uh, I also want to do a conversation on people centric conver- uh, sorry not conversations people centric conservation uh, now this is basically us sampling um I guess people who are doing incredible work in the world of conservation and then talking or rather having a story around them as well. So if you know someone who is I guess out of the ordinary has a unique story, conservation story, uh do hit me up on email, I'd be glad to spotlight uh some of those. Uh then I'm also thinking of doing a an episode on the trials and tribulations of being a safari guide. Um yeah so I've I've had a bit of a, an exchange with some tour guides and they have some interesting stories. <laughs> so if you are a tour guide or if you know a tour guide that has some interesting stories be it 
um, incredible sightings, be it the stress of having some clients. I know some clients can be a stress. <laughs> uh, it could be some life-threatening experiences in the bush. Uh, I, I already have some names in mind, but if you do have uh, someone who you think would add to the conversation, bring value to the conversation, please do let me know. Um, then I'm also thinking of doing a, a podcast on um, the exotic pet trade. Now, in the exotic pet trade, I'm sampling out the lions, the parrots, and the monkeys, which are basically uh, the majority of the animals that I see uh, people flaunting on social media, uh, people posing with, taking selfies, uh, hugging, um, <laughs> uh, basically pets that people have in their homes that are meant to be wild animals. So I know I had scheduled a conversation with, uh, what are these guys called? Uh, World Animal Protection, that's WAP. Um, maybe I'd like to pick up on that discussion and just follow up on them. And then also, if you guys think of anyone else that would bring value to that conversation, please do let me know. That's a conversation on uh, pets. I uh, must apologize, the neighbor, the neighbor is drilling, so <laughs> we'll have to... We'll, ha- we'll have to keep going. Um, then I'm thinking of doing a topic on the dark world of illegal wildlife trade. Now that's going to be a hardcore conservation piece. Um, and uh, I think we'll have to have some experts on, maybe a representative from the Wildlife Authority, uh, some guys from the hardcore conservation world to discuss this interesting um, um, and also usually sticky subject of illegal wildlife trade. If you are an illegal wildlife trader and you are <laughs> you are quite brave and bold enough to come on the show, well, mine is a free space. I'd be very glad or very happy to have you on as to have a bit of a conversation as well. So if you do know an expert in this field, illegal wildlife trade, please do hit me up. And if you are that expert as well, I'd be glad to have you on. Um... Yeah, I'm also thinking of doing uh, an episode on baby rhinos and um, the fight to conserve the rhino species. Uh, of course, just the other week I was reading about uh, rhinos being born at Ziwa Rhino Sanctuary. And I'd like to pick up on that conversation around um, the babies of the wild, particularly the young baby rhinos, and would like to have a conversation on that. If you are a rhino conservationist, rhino expert, Hit me up in the in the in the in, on the email or maybe the DM as well. I'd like to have an, a conversation on that as well. Then I'm also thinking about doing a, a discussion on conservation in conflict zones. I've already reached out to um, someone in Congo uh, in the Virunga National Park. Um, of course, that's an area that's really been hit with uh, civil strife and uh, unrest. So I'd like to explore the discussion of how. Uh, conservation is a challenge in those conflict zones and maybe how conservation is um, if I could call it uh, a sense of hope or it brings hope to people in those destinations. So if you are someone who has a bit of knowledge around or maybe who's worked in a conflict zone in the conservation space please do let me know. I'd, I'd be glad to bring you onto the show. Okay, I'm also thinking about doing an episode on seeking safety in the Land Cruiser and Land Rover. Now, this is basically going to be an episode of us um, getting a bit of history around where safari vehicles began, uh, how they've evolved over the years, how they've created um, this shell that is usually uh, an, a, a, a perfect environment or a perfect box that transports tourists maybe from the airport to the, to the wilderness uh, or maybe it takes them around the different protected areas. It's often uh, forgotten. It's often not given the praise that it deserves. And I'd like to uh, uh, basically do a bit of a conversation on that. Um, thinking of bringing on uh, Satbir uh, from Hans Paul. But if there's any other person that you think would add to that conversation, uh, Hans Paul are basically the guys in Tanzania who, um, they call it what, modify uh, land cruisers into what we know as safari vehicles. So Sadbir, Sadbir would be one really interesting uh, uh, gentleman to bring on, but if there's anyone else that you you guys think of, do let me know. Um, 
I'm thinking of doing a conversation on uh, the world's most trafficked animal, which if you didn't know, <laughs> uh, is the pangolin. Eh? So I'd like to do an episode around that. Um, it's an animal that most people do not know. It's an animal that goes pretty much unknown so many times. So if you are an expert in pangolins, if you are a conservationist that's doing a bit of research, uh, if you are someone who has some interesting um, information about pangolins and um, the the trade around them, please hit me up on email. I'd be glad to have that conversation. Then um, I'm also interested in doing a conversation on uh, gorilla conservation. Now, I already have a piece scheduled with the gorilla doctors, uh, but I'd like to do something that has the gorilla doctors and maybe two other conservationists as well, particularly to discuss the topic of gorilla conservation. Maybe I'll think about bringing on Dr. Seguya from the Greater Virunga Transboundary Co Collaboration to at least give it a bit of a wider scope than just the Ugandan setting. So if you know anyone else, again, let me know. And if you are that person, please hit me up. Uh, I'd be glad to have you on the show. Um, I'd also like to do an episode on rhino horn trading to save. Now, the notion behind that is uh, this discussion in South Africa, rather Southern Africa, the Southern African countries, where there's a bit of, there's an activity where they dehorn rhinos. So I'd like to dig deep into how that is being done, but also to ask the question of where does the horn go after it's dehorned of the rhino? So if you are an expert in that field, if you've done a bit of research, if you know someone who is very knowledgeable around the dehorning campaign, I don't know if it's a campaign or it's an activity, uh, let me know, hit me up on email. I'd be glad to have a conversation. Um, hunters and poachers, what's the difference? That's another episode I'd like to do. Uh, I know we did, a, we did an episode around trophy hunting where I had <laughs> quite an interesting discussion with, um, we call them professional hunters. He was a professional hunter from Sweden. And I also had a hardcore conservationist from HSI, which is a Humane Society International, one of the biggest conservation NGOs on the planet. And we were, we were battling or debating uh, why, why um, trophy hunting is done, what, what's, what, what's, what's the whole notion behind it, is it really conservation? If you've not listened to that episode, please go listen to it. It's currently our most streamed episode on the show. Um, I, I believe you'll enjoy it. <laughs> you might, you might, you might also live a bit cross annoyed, <laughs> but well, that, that, that's 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 what we create here. We create a space where people come and share, uh, come and provide their side of the picture and. Yeah, that's 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 what that's what motivates me to keep creating. Just create a safe space for people to come and share and engage. So I'd like to do a topic on, um, as I said, the difference between those professional hunters and uh, what we call poachers in Africa. Why would you have someone come here and hunt our animals, but then you lock up someone who is doing the same thing, and these people contributing to the same? or rather causing a similar challenge to the wild. That's a discussion I'd like to have. Uh, let me know if you are interested in jumping onto that conversation. Um, I also want to do an episode on uh, wild meat, or call it bush meat. So if you know someone who runs a restaurant or someone who has experience in bush meat, <laughs> uh, let me know. I'd like to have a discussion on that. How we roll it out, that is for me, that is for me to uh, keep to myself the detail of that conversation, but I bet you not, it will be, I kid you not, it will be um, a very interesting conversation. Um, I also want to do a follow-up episode of an episode we did uh, with a couple of friends of mine, awesome people. Uh, it was a conversation on uh, conservation storytelling, where we kind of just hit a bit of, a, we just tapped a bit of the surface but I'd like us to do a further deep dive uh, into that conversation to get a bit more uh, detail on conservation storytelling. Who are the guys doing it? Uh, what are the win? What are the case studies of where it's it's having um, huge impact? Uh, what are those notable um, 
those notable creatives that are worth spotlighting what lessons can we learn how can we do it better how can we do it more um that's a discussion that I'd, I'd want to have as a follow up of that episode that we did i think two weeks back if you've not listened to it please go listen to it um i also want to do a conversation on titled on borrowed time now this is basically me um inviting guys on to discuss the urgency of climate storytelling i've been interested in doing a couple of climate um stories for film and uh, photo um and i feel like it's a it's it's an interesting area that's not i guess highlighted enough especially from a point of view where a local layman like you and me would understand uh, the climate discussion seems to be a lot of uh, if i could call it an elitist uh, discussion it's way high in the clouds <laughs> uh, and there's need to really bring it down for um, the local man to kind of understand it also needs to be told through a local voice uh, like you and me so i'd like to have that discussion if you know someone who is a climate storyteller or someone who has a bit of knowledge around that please hit me up then uh second uh but not list second last but not list i'd like to do a conversation on uh why environmental conservation won't save nature now as wrong as that might sound to you <laughs> um i want to explore that i've had a conversation with uh, some people who uh i guess more advocate more for uh, they call it what sustainable use of resources so people like um trophy hunters people like professional hunters who say let's um shoot a few animals uh but then pay a huge chunk of money to support conservation of the bigger herd then you have people who really advocate for replanting people who advocate for um breeding of animals eh? so so that we can conserve a species that is maybe really hit uh threatened by uh s- s- survival and then you have on the other side people who say no do not touch the planet leave it to regenerate leave it to recover on its own so those are the two fields and that's a kind of debate that I'd like to have the guys that say okay we can help the earth recover and then the guys who say no let the earth recover on its own and why i say why i've titled it why conservation may not serve the serve the earth or may not serve nature is because my understanding is the environment or nature takes millions and millions of years to regenerate so i'd like the conservationists to tell me how or what are which practical solutions they are offering to um help us conserve nature uh that i guess throw off the discussion of those guys who are promoting um they call it what sustainable use of resources then finally um just this week I was uh, having a chat with uh, a guest who was on the podcast uh that's Dr Matthew from South Africa and he highlighted the he he brought up an interesting story around the forest elephants now Uganda is one of the few countries that are fortunate to have the African forest elephants I've actually been fortunate to see them in Bwindi the Rohingya sector Uh, a couple of friends of mine have seen them in Chibale as well I've, I've never seen them in Chibale not been lucky uh, but I'd like to do um or rather w- what Dr Matthew was saying is that those elephants help uh, in the process of carbon carbon sequestration Now, that's quite a heavy term for people who uh normal people like you and me carbon sequestration is basically um the the the, the way in which uh, forests or maybe elements of the ecosystem help absorb carbon the carbon dioxide we create and reduce the carbon in the air which in turn helps us in reduce in reducing greenhouse gases and also reducing global warming so what dr matthew was saying is that these forest elephants actually help in that process of, of carbon sequestration and what he was saying is the elephants these particular elephants Uh, unfortunately um under a huge threat i think they're critically endangered so i'd like to that 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 kind of took on my mind towards a discussion around how we need to conserve their environment or rather their habitat the forest elephants 
how we need to conserve them and in turn help and contribute to um, uh, our, our fight to reduce greenhouse gases and help the environment in the process of carbon sequestration. I'm a bit stressed with my neighbor mowing, but <laughs> nothing to do. Uh, but with that said, uh, those are the topics I'm looking at. So as I said, I need help with identifying a venue. I need help with identifying a co-host. Uh, of course, for the times I'm on the road, I, I, it's, it's good for the show to keep going. Then I also need help with, or rather feedback on some of those topics and also help with identifying some guests. Yeah, so th- I'd like to once again thank you all for tuning in. I thank you all for streaming the show, streaming the podcast. Uh, it's been a while since I last said welcome to back to my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, but I've been busy. Um, uh, I guess that's a good thing, a good and bad thing. Um, yeah, but as we work towards creating, making this a video podcast, I'd like to make this a bit more engaging, a bit more of a community effort. Uh, you guys share feedback. I share some of my thoughts, share some thoughts of friends, and we see how to make this an interesting space. If you've not listened to the podcast yet, I'd like to remind you that the podcast is available on all streaming platforms, all major streaming platforms. Uh, we are available on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, where else are we? Uh, Spotify. Uh, for guys tuning in in the US, we are available on iHeartRadio, which very few creatives are on. I'm <laughs> quite fortunate to be on iHeartRadio. Uh, we're also available on CastBox, Deezer, Pandora. And uh, if I'm forgetting any other platform, I'll just, I'll just say all other streaming platforms. Yeah, so uh, do let me know. Uh, share, share, share a bit of feedback. I'd be very glad to look at it over the next coming weeks. And uh, yeah, that's me letting you into behind the scenes of uh, how the show is going to evolve over the next coming weeks. And those topics should help us walk this journey. And maybe, as I did mention, that uh, yes, the show has been doing very well. Uh, it's, it's been high up the charts. And the only way we can keep it high up the charts is if you guys recommend the show, is if you keep streaming it. But I also want to encourage more creatives to come into this space uh, of uh, podcasting for travel, podcasting for conservation, uh, because yes, I'm one voice, but if we had a, a couple of voices, we'd be able to advance um, these messages and spread the story further, spread the messages further, have an even bigger impact if we joined hands if we uh, had a couple a cu- couple more voices especially local voices i'm a proponent of african stories told by indigenous africans so let's encourage more creatives to dive into this podcast space <laughs> which is still a bit nascent in uganda and also in the, in africa but i feel like it's it's going to pick up um, no beef for radio. <laughs> uh, I think people should still listen to the radio, but I feel like the podcast space is one of those um, spaces that is still going to um, become huge in the next coming in the next coming months, years. Um, and of course, there are gains as well for people who want to uh, monetize as well. I've been able to not to not to spill too, too many beans. I've been able to get some deals, some invitations to speak, um, of course, paid, paid, paid arrangements. So there is a win-win at uh, both sides of it. So I, I do not want to be the only one at the top of the charts. I'd like to have a few more creatives as well join the conversation. All right, I'm done blabbing and I'll apologize again for my neighbor mowing. <laughs> it, it's what happens when you are recording in your home space. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all for tuning in today. Thank you all for the support. And as we say, I guess I'll have to see you in the next one.